Dear friends in Christ, today is Ash Wednesday, and we begin our journey through Lent with the reception of ashes. As we receive the ashes on our foreheads, we take stock of the purpose of Lent. It is an exercise in cleansing and holy desire. So during Lent, we are invited to plan some penitential practices, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We must not make this a show. We must internalize them and make them more spiritual. So we begin Lent by receiving the ashes on our foreheads and plan to prepare well for Easter. And we know that Lent lasts 40 days, although in actual fact there are more than 40 days. In imitation of the time Jesus spent in the desert before starting his public ministry. And so what is the purpose of Lent? It is to prepare us for a more effective involvement in our vocation as Christians. The church and the readings, the readings prescribe fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Perhaps any of these could be difficult for an individual. Maybe fasting is probably the hardest of the three traditional practices during Lent. I remember some, sometimes in the past, in the evening of Ash Wednesday, someone would meet me and say, Father, I forgot. I ate meat. Have I committed a mortal sin? Anyway. The scriptures may help us to see that fasting is not necessarily what we think it is, namely just eating less and abstaining from meat on Ash Wednesday and the Fridays in Lent. Or those, those things are good, good practices to mortify the body. The body. Our selections from the scriptures give us a more wholesome description of what fasting means. The prophet Isaiah, the prophecy of Isaiah, tells us how David in his penitential psalm, which shows us that fasting is more of a giving of ourselves than of a pulling away from a meal or not eating meat. The reading from Isaiah beckons us to be givers to the marginal people whom we know, to those in prison, to those who are homeless and poor, and to those isolated and lonely in assisted living centers. We may be able to give some time to one of these just mentioned, we are to turn from our private type of fasting and take on the spiritual dimensions of what Scripture means by fasting as David, Isaiah, and Jesus tell us today. The time of holocaust and burnt offerings is over. We are now more compelled to perform the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy today as our way of deepening the meaning of fasting. We are asked not to close our door or turn our backs on those asking for our time, our listening, and even giving generously to someone in need. We may challenge ourselves dear friends, to do things more practical during this Lenten season, to be more practical. I was talking to some people and I said, in some areas, maybe families could sit together and decide that from today till the end of Lent, all those in the family who are working and earning a living 
Just keep aside every day one dollar. Just one dollar. Keep it aside. And at the end of Lent, think of what to do with it. Is there some a neighbor who is having no food? Can you give that to the neighbor? Is there someone who is having no shelter? Can you give that to the person? Or bring it to the church, give it to the priest, or give it to St. Vincent de Paul? Or are there centers that cater for the needs of people who are in, uh, homeless or handicapped? Can I take that there? When I was in a seminary, before Ash Wednesday, the whole seminary community, I mean the students, will sit and have a meeting to decide on what to do as a community to live, keep aside something. We used to have some expensive meals that we ate once a week. We would decide we'll give that up and we'll keep the money for that meal aside. And at the end of Lent, we do that, and then people bring their own individual collections. At the end of Lent, we bring the money forward. Sometimes we have something like $1,000. That is much money for us students in, in Cameroon. We, used to, we have a, a center called the MAU Center, which takes care of people who are mentally ill, we give some of the money to them. There is a center that takes care of handicapped people. The Reverend Sisters, Sisters of St. Francis, we give some of the money to them. And a center that takes care of uh, people with leprosy, we give some to them. And some people will go to the, to the villages and see students who were unable to pay school fees and pay their school fees for a year. We thought that was being practical during Lent. Because we can easily misinterpret fasting. Like keeping aside, I used to drink two bottles of beer. I would drink only one, and I keep one aside. Then after Lent, I can drink all back. <laughs> that would be the wrong interpretation of Lent. Oh, I keep aside, I don't eat meat every Friday, and at the end of Lent, I will eat all the meat. Mm, that will be the wrong interpretation. Can you keep it aside and do something for someone? That would be really spiritual. St. Augustine said, the entire Christian life is an exercise of holy desire. He does not say that we should annihilate our normal human desires, but we should raise and purify them. Our desires are far too small if we look for fulfillment only in what this world offers by way of transient satisfactions. But God wants us to have so much more, his very self. During Lent, we seek to tune in to higher desires, our longing for God. That should go above our own day-to-day -day desires because the body will always desire those things that give us, I want to call it vain pleasure, and we need to fight those tendencies. In today's gospel, Jesus shows the way, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, the classic Lenten practices. Of these, prayer has the first. Our eternity will be an eternal relationship with the living God in communion, in the communion of saints. That relationship begins in this life or it does not begin at all. Our main prayer is by sharing in the Mass the loving sacrifice of Christ, which opens heavens to us. Prayer is the foundation of our friendship with God 
and it opens the way to eternal life. Sometimes we may pray and feel that our prayers are not answered, and that's where I get practical again. Prayers are not answered. Why? Maybe perhaps because I'm still bearing a grudge with someone one year ago, five years ago, ten years ago. I'm still holding the person in my heart. Can I let that go? Perhaps I'm full of anger. Maybe I would need to work with my anger during this Lent. That type of anger, that leads me to say all sorts of things to my partner, to my kids, to my friends. And then later on I start regretting, but they are already said. Can I control that anger? So that by the end of Lent, it's not that I start being angry again, but by the end of Lent, I can beat my chest and say, I have achieved something. Perhaps I need to work on my relationship with people. But sometimes I judge people wrongly. I need to be more appreciative when I see people and even more appreciative at home with my kids, with my partner. And when we appreciate, people do more. How do I relate with my clients at work? I need to make them smile more. That's being practical. Maybe I need to think and check how I talk about people behind their backs. What are the things I say? I may need to check that. Then I will make this Lenten season more practical and more spiritual, and then I will grow closer to God. All of us resonate in some way, as I said already, to the idea of alms giving. Lent is a good time to rid ourselves of some of the clutter in our life. With a bit more vision, could we perhaps do more to serve the needy? Not so that people will consider us generous, but to imitate God's generosity to us. I always come to believe that when the scriptures say, store up treasures for yourselves in heaven, it means that what we do to others is storing up treasure for ourselves in heaven. It may be material, or it may be just giving out our talents, helping somebody, give, showing somebody the way. I mean, that is the, that is the right thing, even. Showing somebody the way. It's giving your talent and helping somebody see the light. It's storing up treasures for yourself in heaven. And that will lead you us to heaven. Again, St. Augustine speaks of the cleansing of the heart to free us for holy desire. This will be effective only to the extent that we free ourselves from infatuation with this world. Like the example we already have of filling empty containers sometimes to give it to those who are taking care of kids, we are asked to do more during this season. Dear friends, let us pray that during this Lenten season, we will be filled with that holy desire to get closer to God by getting closer to one another and helping especially those in need in our community. And we begin with our families. I always say this. When our families are in disarray, we cannot claim to go out there and do some good. You know you're coming back home to face some quarrels. You have no peace at home. You can't give peace out there. We begin with our family. Stay together. Pray together. Eat together. 
and pray that this season will be a fruitful one. Amen.